you are about to listen to Kaku chapter 56. You shall overcome the graven images of gold covering. Preached on Sunday, October 22, 2006. In a Jamie Abijan Ivory Coast. Extracted from the book of Prophet Kaku Philippe, the only true prophet sent by the Lord Jesus Christ, in fulfillment of the cry of Matthew 25 6 for the salvation of our generation. Kaku chapter 56 You shall overcome the graven images of gold covering. The Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and to the ages to come. God and the prophets, the church and the world, history is not but repeating itself. Israel comes back to God by the living prophet, and returns to worldliness under the eyes of the priests, being themselves powerless before an infernal cycle, as old as the world. And on the other side, we can see the church before the same fate, from father to son, from generation to generation, from age to age. That is as old as the world. A generation comes with a new wave of seduction, and God sends a prophet to reveal and overcome that seduction, and the prophet and his generation go past, then in the long run, a new generation of men rises on the earth, and the same Satan comes back with a new system of seduction. Satan goes forth conquering in that he might conquer. And an angel goes out of the presence of God, and comes against the attack of Satan. Exactly as we can see it in the seals. Amen. A new horseman goes out of the presence of Satan, an angel also goes out of the presence of God, to come and influence a man on earth. On the side of Satan, the instrument on earth, they are the priests, scribes, rabbis, pastors, pastoral schools, theological institutes, mission and ministry churches, whereas on the other side, an angel goes out of the presence of God, and comes and uses a man on earth, a prophet and his message is the weapon of God's children, so as to overcome the ruse of Satan in their age, in their generation. It is exactly what is going on in our generation as well. And our generation came up with the internet that William Branham did not know, and did not mention, not even once. And you can see that when Satan came in the internet, Branhamists knew nothing about it, and Satan seduced them so much so that, like David, they placed the message of the evening time on that. And it is the internet that was their evangelist. But Matthew 25 6 revealed that, and in accordance with the grace I have received, I tell you that if William Branham were alive today, he would not do that. Never. Well, let's take Genesis 31 now. I wish to read verses 22 to 32, and then I will read or then a brother will read verses 16 to 20 of chapter 35. I read. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob had fled. And he took his brethren with him. And pursued after him seven days journey, and overtook him on Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night, and said to him. Take care thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. And Laban came up with Jacob. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done? that thou hast deceived me, and hast carried away my daughters as captives of war. Why didst thou flee away covertly, and steal away from me, and didst not tell me, that I might have conducted thee with mirth and with songs, with tambour and with harp, and hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Now thou hast acted foolishly. It would be in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spoke to me last night saying, Take care that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. And now that thou must needs be gone, because thou greatly longedst after thy father's house, why hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, he shall not live. Before our brethren discern what is thine with me, and take it to thee. But Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. Very well. Genesis 31. Now notice Rachel, this enchanting woman, she that Jacob loved. Sin is propitious where it is man's love that expresses itself. Because the basis of that love will be carnal. 
but there where God has united, or that the Father has given in marriage of his own authority. There will be less defilement. What people call forced marriage in Africa was a good morality, a gift of God, and a good sense that only the word of God should cancel. You see? Well, and the spirit of the forced marriage proposed Leah, and man's passion, behind which the perfect will of God hid this time, proposed the enchanting Rachel. Up to this day, Rachel has remained a reference in Israel. And even Rachel's tomb has remained a reference in Israel. She was buried before David and the kings, at the place which would be the little Bethlehem one day, whence the Messiah would come out. She is not the mother of all the Jews, and yet thus is she considered. And by the time of the massacre of children under Caesar Augustus, the Bible could say in Matthew 2 verse 17 to 18, then was fulfilled that which was spoken through Jeremiah as the prophet, saying, A voice has been heard in Ramah, weeping, and great lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. Amen. But the mystery is that, it is behind this union apparently based on man's passion that Joseph will come out, the Savior of Israel is also out of Bathsheba, the woman took away from Uriah, Solomon, the right hand of David, will come. It is thus a type of the living church. And Leah is this church who went forth after the seven prophetic times, and Rachel is the continuation out of which Joseph, the male son before the pains of childbearing is to come. The congregation says, Amen. Of Rachel comes out he that was beaten and killed by his brothers. You see? Joseph is Jesus Christ and the male son. Joseph was one day sold as Judas was going to sell the Lord Jesus to the Egyptians of his time. While Joseph was in prison, in Genesis 40, the chief of the cupbearers on Joseph's right was saved, and the chief of the bakers on his left was killed, as on the cross, the robber on Jesus' right was saved, and he that was on his left was condemned. Always on the right. You see? As in Luke 1 verse 11, Gabriel appeared to Zacharias on the right side of the altar, and in the vision of April 24, 1993, the great crowd came from the right side. The congregation says, Amen. Well, I would like to read Genesis 31 verse 22 to 32 again. We can see here that, the message of Jacob was preached, and Leah and Rachel who were in fact the living church, went forth. This church loved the God of Jacob more than her kindred and her homeland, and she went out of there. You see? Jacob came from far away to seek this church. You see? Rachel found that the message was true, she left her kindred, she left her church, her acquaintances, her passions, but as for these gods, she could not get rid of them. She came with that in the desert of Revelation 12:14, and died on the way, but out of her came Joseph, the male son. And notice that the foolish virgins, the other part, could not really triumph over these gods who were first and also television and the internet. And that is what happened in Genesis 31. You say, Brother Philippe, how could Rachel hide television or the internet in her stuff? Be patient. I have learnt that there are mobile phones equipped with television. You see? It is question of television and the internet. These are the two things that influence that living church over there, and that are influencing this living church here. In the presence of Joshua, that great prophet sent from God, it was not a false prophet or a false doctrine, but television and the internet that influenced the church. The congregation says, Amen. Now, I would like to say that before 2002, I had bought a new television set at a Lebanese shop. We would only watch the news, and magazines with some reports and documentaries. We never watched a movie. I never allowed that. But in 2002, when I started to preach this message, one evening just before dark, a strong thought struck my mind like a word. Remove this thing from there. Then, a battle started. I said, I will give it to a repairman to resell it for me at a small price. And minute after minute, I could feel the pressure to remove that thing. And I said, if I do so, and I give this thing to somebody, I will give an easy opportunity to somebody to sin. Yet the Bible says, 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I felt this pressure rise and I said, Oh God, I will do it when everyone is sleeping. But the pressure was so strong that I said to open it, and cut out all that was therein, so that nobody could recover it in the dustbin. And then I lifted it up with all my strength, and I went to throw it into the dustbin. I felt relieved and a great peace was in my heart over several days. You see? Exodus 23 verse 20 says, Here behold, I send an angel before thee, to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee to the place that I have prepared. Be careful in his presence, and hearken unto his voice, do not provoke him, for he will not forgive your transgressions. For my name is in him. But if thou shalt diligently hearken unto his voice, and do all that I shall say, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies, and an adversary to thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, you see? And whoever watches that bad thing bows down to the gods of the nations. O God! Send us the spirit of Josiah, A.S.A., and Jehu to purify your people of these graven images of gold covering. Isaiah 30 verse 21 to 22 says, I am going to read that, and when ye turn to the right hand or when ye turn to the left, thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. Not a way but the way. Which way? That of Isaiah 35 verse 8. The congregation says, Amen. I continue, and ye shall defile the silver covering of your graven images, and the gold overlaying of your molten images, thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth, out, shalt thou say unto it, brethren, throw them out, throw television out, throw the internet out. If your computer is not for a good cause or the work, then throw it out. If it is not for work, or to read or listen to a preaching, then throw it out. Do not take it into your bedroom, but throw it out. Do not say, all depends on the use that one makes of it. Throw it out. Because, as the serpent was in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis, television and the internet are coming back today, as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in this new Eden of Satan. The congregation says, Amen. Put television in a village, and you will see the behavior and mentalities changing fast. Brethren, God wants to bless us. God wants to multiply our blessings, but not to buy graven images of gold covering that we will erect in our houses. We do not want for this world, that's why the millennium has been prepared for us. The congregation says, Amen. Now let's take Joshua 24, see God's wisdom. If Joshua told Jews directly to get rid of the graven images of those gods, they were going to tell him, Why don't you also talk about radio and newspapers? But Joshua said, You cannot follow Jehovah. It was the last and the greatest piece of advice that he left to his people before dying, and it was there, in Joshua 24, that I saw prophet Joshua using the thus saith the Lord. He fought wars. He took possession of Canaan. He stopped the sun. But it is there in Joshua 24 that this great prophet come after Moses uses the thus saith the Lord. It is here question of Israel. Of the holiest people on earth. The people that walks with God by the prophet. The people that was born under the direction of Moses, the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. People to whom Moses had said in Deuteronomy 7, that if ye, Moses, had one of those graven images, he would blow it with his shotgun. Amen. I believe that it is in the brochure, God's power to transform. References 169 and 242, he said, we do not have any television set. There will be none in my house, never. God told me not to do it. In the same brochure, he said, I never intend to have one television in my house. No sir. I do not want that in my house. I would blow with my shotgun. I don't want nothing to have to do with that evil thing. No sir. But in spite of that, those gods never left the Branimist homes. They keep silent over that. This is why despite all of their advantages, they do not understand the midnight cry. 
it is God who does not allow them to understand according to Daniel 12 verse 10. You see? And why doesn't man want to obey? It is because that comes from God. If the devil had told him to walk barefoot, or spend three days of dry fasting, or forty days, or even fifty days of fasting, he would have done it, committing their body to useless sufferings. In that, they are the rich ones who suffer from it. David could tell God not to give him much riches, which would take him away from him, as it was the case of that rich young man in Mark 10. You see? A poor worries about his daily bread. If he has too much, it is just a radio, like me, to listen to the news. I listen to the news every day on radio as soon as I can. The rebellious one will say like Cain, why doesn't he prohibit radio too? But know that I have said what I have received. I did not see any radio in the revelation, but make good use of it. Have your CD players and others and be simply obedient to the heavenly vision. And may the Lord bless you in this age and the age to come. The congregation says, Amen. Now when we see Israel and Joshua and Moses' rigorous law, what gods can be amongst them apart from television and the internet? The devil will tell you that they are jewels and other, but reject that. Amen. Reject that. They are the same gods today. When you see the Jewish people, what is thus that so strong God before whom, Joshua will acknowledge the limits and weaknesses and impossibility of Israel to follow Jehovah. They are television and the internet. They are the same gods today, and they are the same graven images of gods which make that today, you cannot follow the Lord Jesus Christ, the midnight cry, the message promised for your generation. The congregation says, Amen. At the end of each age, it is written, to him that overcomes. Overcoming what? Overcoming the gods of his time. The reward of God in this age is to those ones. And they are the winners of the age who inherit the kingdom. The congregation says, Amen. What are the gods of the nations today? What are the graven images of gold covering, before which the whole earth bows down? They are television and the internet. What are the pagans' gods today? They are television and the internet. What are the gods of politicians, football players and musicians? They are television and the internet. What are the gods of Catholics, Protestants, Evangelicals and Branhamists today? They are television and the internet. What are the gods whose graven images are in our hands, in our houses and in our hearts? They are television and the internet. And when the devil will move this hideout towards phones, the temptation will lie at your doorstep, and you dominate over it. The congregation says, Amen. What is the internet? The internet is the greatest means of communication, that God ever gave to humanity, being able to pierce through all forms of human and religious barriers. And one day, it's through the internet that the barriers and the walls of Islam will be pierced, and the word of God and deliverance shall reach the Arab, even in his interior room. The television and the internet are means of communication but the devil has turned them into objects of sin. Television and the internet are now graven images of the gods of the nations. And it is the depth of Satan. The congregation says, Amen. In the same way that the earth is the center of execution of our galaxy, as God showed it in the preaching, the seven dimensions, thus also, are television and the internet the centers of execution of the fifth dimension the abyss, the purgatory place and all the depth of Satan. What is this? Television and the internet are the mouth of Satan, and the order of the fallen angels. By getting rid of those graven images of gold covering, you get rid of it all. The congregation says, Amen. And we have to do it because we are in the world. But we are not of the world. We know that all that is bad comes from hell through television and the internet. When you see those evil hairstyles, men with earrings, girls in mini skirts, women who lead churches whereas they have menses each month, women in trousers, makeup, false nails, false hairs, eccentric clothes, and all that. The channel, they are television and the internet. A man who has a television set home without control. Paul said not to have communion with such a man. He is a false brother, 
you shall look upon him as a pagan. The congregation says, Amen. The difference between the foolish virgins and the wise virgins, is in the application of the word. You see? At the time when some not feeling the blessing of the Spirit go to throw the television set, just for them to get purified of all those demons of television, to receive the Spirit, the rapture will take place. You see? At the time when he tries to be radical, so as to no longer have any portion with a Catholic, Protestant, Evangelical or Branimist, the rapture will take place, or then death have overtaken him. Brethren, do not play with the word. At a certain moment, the foolish will recognize themselves by their own remarks, they will see that they are those things that cause them to be powerless. And they will not be able to obey and have the blessing of the wise on the same day. All the remainder, their hypocrisy and their trick in the walk is like Branhamists. This prostitute, this mixed race woman in the military truck of April 24, 1993. The congregation says, Amen. And I could see God's people in spirit walking in the desert, and several at the back, bent under the weight of large televisions on their head. Where are they going? To the paradise. No. They imagine a paradise without any television. But as soon as the word of God has come forth, as a commandment against that, if you die with that, your place is in hell. For you have been an instrument of Satan to trouble the people of God. You joined your voice of prostitution, adultery and rebellion to the prayer and songs of the saints. The congregation says, Amen. Well, God let Rachel come out of her fatherland with her gods. And God's grace and power were with them, in spite of those God's presence in the camp. But God did not allow Rachel to reach the end with her gods. You see? Let's read that in Genesis 35 verse 16 to 20. And they journeyed from Bethel. And there was yet a certain distance to come to Ephrat. When Rachel travailed in childbirth, and it went hard with her and her childbearing, and it came to pass when it went hard with her and her childbearing, that the midwife said to her, Fear not, for this also is a son for thee. And it came to pass as her soul was departing for she died that she called his name Benoni. But his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died, and was buried on the way to Ephrat, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob erected a pillar upon her grave that is the pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. Rachel died on the way because of those gods. But she reached the promised land and the city of the redemption. She reached Bethlehem. Likewise, God let Israel out of Egypt with the gods of the nations. And this is why they fell on the way, in the desert. Likewise, in the evening time, the same God of Rachel and Israel led our fathers out of Egypt with all those gods whose graven images of gold covering, our television and the internet. And now, as in Joshua 24, at the end of this message, more than a mere thus saith the Lord, comes out to say, with whomsoever thou findest thy gods, he shall not live. You see? Jacob could not think that after a so powerful message, and some people who loved him more than their father, their mother, their brothers, their sisters and their fatherland, and who loved his God could have television and the internet in their homes, those graven images of gold covering, those gods of the nations. And he did not hesitate for a second to say, with whomsoever thou findest thy gods, he shall not live. Apart from being means of communication, I cannot think that somebody who has believed in the midnight cry, and who has left his fatherland to go towards the millennium could have television and the internet, those graven images of gold covering in his house, and make a bad use of them and come to the public confession. Such a person will perish on the way. For television and the internet cannot enter the millennium. And he that has ears to hear, let him hear. You've just listened to Kaku chapter 56. You shall overcome the graven images of gold covering. The message of Prophet Kaku Philippe is in more than 100 sermons, in audio and written versions, and more than 20 video interviews. 
You can get them for free on the website www.philipkaku.org or in version for mobile phone 1-800-227-5433.